Hello, I'm Marcus Maybe from Are You Can Entertainment, and you're not. Dimitri, if you're watching this, you're going to love what I have in store. First things first, you may notice the scenery behind me. Uh, I actually moved into the cool Evie's house, so he's letting me use his stuff, so. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about Mario Kart. More specifically, the arcade versions and stuff. More specifically than that, more obscure titles like Mario Kart Arcade Grand Prix VR. When YouTuber Dimitri released his episode of Mario Kart Origins for Mario Kart Arcade GP VR, he didn't actually play the game mostly because he didn't have the chance and stuff, so he had to interview someone who did. Steady94. So was it a VR arcade, or what was it like when you actually got to play it? Like, where was the place? The place itself is in a bowling center, um, but next to the alleys, there's like an arcade area for video games. And there's a whole new area that they made for a VR section, and half of it was dedicated to like an exercise fitness regime, and the other half was Mario Kart. Mm -hmm. And that was so exciting when I saw that because there are only two or three in the whole of the UK and one of them is right here in Leeds. When I heard about a cabinet being in Leeds, I exploded. I was already planning a trip to the UK, so, well, I guess we add an extra stop. At the same time, I was scouring the internet trying to find footage, decent footage, of the DK Cup from Mario Kart Arcade Grand Prix Deluxe. Enter AGS videos over the years from an arcade repairman based in the UK who normally didn't touch Japanese cabinets and stuff, but was so intrigued by this one that he just had to record some stuff. He basically took two direct capture videos and extracted the soundtrack for us to enjoy. So, I traced over to where the Japanese twin was, an arcade in Bradford, which I'll link in the description, and the rest is history. The arcade is locally owned and maintained by a husband and wife, and they're, they're very nice people and stuff. A lot of our cabinets are imported ones from various different regions and stuff, and I also found out that they also have Arcade GP2 as well as Arcade GP DX. Unfortunately, try as I may, I could not find the GP VR cabinet, so that one was a bit of a bust. So yeah, enjoy the video. Uh, so, the arcade I'm looking for is going to be in Bradford, which is about... I did not plan for it to be two hours away. It will be one of my longer trips in this cramped space. Yeah, we just stopped off at the services because I and the person driving me who's always off camera uh, needed to stretch our legs and I'm also getting a drink. I can only do this for brief periods of time, but here's rear view mirror perspective. Just a brief stop. Let's keep on going now. Made it to Bradford in one piece. Now we just gotta find the place with the name. Mm. Okay, so right down there is flashback. It's right across from the Broadway car park as well for anyone coming to Bradford that needs context. Uh, this is the exterior building part. The door is a bit wonky. You have to push the button labeled flashback and they'll let you in. And this is what the interior looks like. Pretty small, but they have a really good selection of games. Hell yeah. Oh, that's cool. They actually have a Space Invaders cabinet that actually projects the thing onto the planets and the sky. See what I mean? Not many people know about that. It's kind of a shame. Okay, so here's the Japanese cabinet. 
Let's see what happens. Okay, so we want rev 1.17 for the dump right now. It's go time. One big difference I'm noticing is that the button to use items is actually on the front of a wheel this time. When in the American cabinets, it's on the side, right where the Mario button is. And the Mario button is smaller on the American ones. Also, there's a receptor for Bana Passport, so there's that. at the same time. I gotta do the one for the next track as well. Yeah, that's the thing about the Japanese cabinets. They actually have a campaign. So it's like an, an actual Mario Kart game. Oh, get something new. Cart. Okay, and this one actually has King Boo. It was a limited time event character and stuff, but it seems that they got him. I'll just go standard cart for now. And... Uh, yeah. 
Here we are with DK Jungle. And I'm adjusting my seat to be further back because it's too close. Uh, oh my god. Once again. Up. Drift. Yeah, see those Mario coins that I'm collecting? Those are used, in case you haven't played the arcade titles, they're used to unlock various characters and stuff. Also, I thought this was cool. The Japanese announcer is actually the voice of Ash Ketchum. Yeah. I didn't even notice it until someone pointed it out and I compared them and yeah, it's the same voice actress, Rika Matsumoto. Whoa. Here we go. Hold on. Whee! Okay, so the wheel's gone slick, and I'm hydroplaning. Not anymore, though. I'm gonna try the other hand, see if that works better. Whoa. Okay, this is working much better in terms of capture quality. Whoa! I don't know what happened. titles is you have to get first otherwise you can't move on to the next race and that's the arcade Mario Kart DK levels oh truly there is nothing more precious about coming out and finding something very rare and hard to find um, I'll put the address in the description box down below in the video, and I'll see you on day two. Bye! Okay, so I'm adding this on as an addendum, but I also found they have Mario Kart Arcade GP2 cabinets. So that's even better, because this is basically just an amped up version of Arcade GP1. So, in reality, this basically makes it so that there's three great Mario Kart games in 
pretty much just driving distance if you ever make a trip down to Bradford. Um, but yeah, they have lots of imported games and stuff, like some stuff from the US, some stuff from the UK, some stuff from other regions like Japan. Um, basically, they just come all over the place. And forget I said that, but anyways, yeah, as you can see, like we got some Japan imports over here. Some classic World Combat uh, for Japan, Wall Art, uh, back to the Mario Kart Arcade. Uh, this is the Japanese one, but it's like that's how it's got the DK levels. And yeah, it's, um, if you're willing to travel to Bradford, then yes. It really is a hot, hot spot. In fact, it's actually a lot less popular than I would have thought. Um, it's, it's actually, I, I think it deserves more attention. So that's why I'm making this video as well. But yeah, there's a lot to be said about this place. Hello again. Two days later, we're currently on our way into the center of Leeds, going to do some stuff, look at some stuff, and then afterwards, some other stuff for part two. So, yeah. All right, here, and the Minster is over there, so we want to go in that direction. Here we are at the Leeds Minster. Now time to find out how to get in. Oh, uh, wait a minute, scratch that. I, I think we may have found something. Okay. Uh, sadly, it's closed, but I mean, it was worth it to see the exterior. I mean, I'm gonna walk around that. So there's an interesting story I read about some of these gravestones and stuff. Uh, over in that direction is like a new Northern Railway service and stuff. And back when they were first making it and stuff, they realized it was going to cut through the old graveyard of the, what is now the parish church and stuff. So, and so what they did was they basically built up the hill a bit and just moved the gravestones themselves a bit so that it still kept the graves intact and stuff. But, just like, you know, but I'll, I'll let you go. Hey, fill in the rest. I'm sorry, guys. I have problems with phrasing things. I have no idea what that is over there uh, in the distance, but it looks super cool. There's the Leeds City Market and stuff. It, I like most. It's an indoor and outdoor thing. Um, I actually haven't seen that one done before. Outdoor area seemed to be basically what stuff being sold secondhand and stuff, with like or slightly used and stuff. And oh, look, movies. Indoor stuff is kind of what what one would expect from these types of things. You know? I like the architecture in this section of it. That's, wow. The very center of this room, this really awesome looking thing, and it just looks gorgeous. Oh my god, I can put myself all over it. We made it to the plaza in one piece. And oddly enough, it looks very much like a plaza I'd see in the US. Weird. What we do? Gonna be stopping off at the nearby Pizza Hut for food. So this is the place, I think. Noel. A lot of the stuff in here is stuff that can be found at Dave and Buster's and stuff. Okay, so after looking the place over and stuff, I found that they removed the VR zone portal from here, which means no arcade GP VR. Um, which is kind of depressing in a way, but at the very least I was able to uh, deconfirm that it was there. Uh, so, sorry, Steady94. But, yeah. We also have Mario Kart Arcade Grand Prix Deluxe here, but 
This time it's the international cabinets. So that was a bust and stuff, but at the very least I was able to play the DK levels and stuff. So, well, thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know what you'd like to see me do in the next video, and I'll see you then. Bye.